It's Monty Aries, yes sir, the main shooter, and we are on the Three Count Podcast. Do you want to get live with me? Do you really want to ride with me? I'm in the club, baby, grind on me. Welcome everybody to another great edition of the Three Count Podcast presents Now Into the Ring, and I'm your host, Clifford Red Dog Miller, the man that leads you up that mountain called wrestling. And by now, with this being season five in our 370-something, 80-something episode, I would just hope you say with me, I am your Sherpa. Because like your tribal chief, acknowledge me. But like every good Sherpa, you got to have someone who's been there, done that, and can do it more efficiently than you can. That's why it's never about me. It's about who's entering the ring. So who's entering the ring tonight? You see this man from... P U W. You find him at F P W. You find him at Chaotic Limitless Top Rope Rap Pro. Let's wrestle. He is a musician. Musicianist. He is a wrestler. He is a father. He is the main cholo, Manny Aries. That's, a, that, that's an intro, dude. I like that. That's fire. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, all, all all of it, man. That's dope. That's better than Kid V, man. I be telling KB to come up with some some good stuff on our pod, and he just be like, "On some other stuff." And I'm just like, all right. All right no, I love I love, I love doing like good intros because then it like sets the tone for like the whole thing. But no, I think sure. what's what's funny though is that like uh, I've caught a couple people off by surprise, right? Because like I'll start off like the podcast, and low key, you guys get to this little quick behind the scenes. It's probably the only episode you get to, but I'll be like. Yeah, man, you know, we're just going to keep it, you know, we're just going to keep a nice energy. We're just going to have some fun. And that moment the, the lights turn on, it's, it's just like we do, like, in wrestling. Like, just the character comes out, right? Like, hey, what's yeah. going on? So, like, it always throws people off. But you always get to throw good energy out there, and then people, you know, want to stay stick around and listen. So it's always important to, like, keep upbeat, you know? Nah, for sure, for sure, man. It's it's it's, it's big. Like, it's uh when it comes to, like, stuff like this and just, like, and it kind of correlates with, like, the wrestling stuff, too, it's just – being it being able for it to come out organic sound organic you know and just look organic you know like that's that's like that's when it's like hit or miss with everything like if you you could go onto a pod and, and then like you could just hear like the not confidence in their voice and the nervousness and and this that and then it's just like ah you kind of turned off and then like for me like specifically i have to listen like the voices have to sound a certain way for me for mm. me to be like yeah okay i could keep listening you know what i'm saying <laughs> <laughs> no, nah, it was funny because like I was uh, I was at a show recently and uh, I had talked to the promoter about it like afterwards. But I was like, hey, man, can we find us like a ring announcer who sounds like he wants to be there? I was like, this person has one energy level and it is not excited. And I was like, can we get someone that's just like, welcome to, <laughs> you know, I mean, like some big energy. Like yeah. I need this person, and I, I legit pulled a quote from uh from from Kanye West, right? I know Yeezy is not someone we talk about, but I was like, I need this dude to stick his dick in this thing called wrestling and hit it like he means to make it blow. Like this we guy. need big man energy in this, or big woman energy. I just need big energy from like somebody, and that's where like I think about this podcast. Like sometimes I get it, like I'm overbearing because I'm like super excited, but you know it comes from a place of genuinity. So I'm just like whatever <laughs> nah, hell yeah bro it's just, it's just really it's you being you bro like you know what i'm saying that's just that's just how you are you know so it's just like that's how you shine you know like if they, they ain't they ain't rocking with it oh well <laughs> yeah, i know it's gonna move it on go. it. <laughs> no that's like one thing so like uh we we met actually at nepwa we were at a, a class um and instantly i watched you and i was like that dude is good <laughs> like, i was like that dude right there is really good. <laughs> You need to you need to stop there, man. I was only at like Napa for like a little bit of time, you know what I'm saying? And then, but like, uh, yeah, I appreciate the kind words, man. You know, I've I've you know, we've done some things. <laughs> yeah, no, 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 because then like you know, and then low key, I you know, I kind of lost track for a little bit, right, for a few weeks, and I saw you pop up at Focus Pro, and then we kind of reconnected it from there. Like I just kind of been peeping and watching you, you know, go through chaotic, you know, tag champions, right. Then you're over back up at Focus Pro. You get the match with Ali Price, and then you come back, right? So it's like watching you grow, grow, and grow, man. I'm like, bro, like this man, like doing things. Like I'm very, very excited for you. I'm very proud because, like, even in the short time that I got to meet up with you, I'm like, yo, this dude, this dude, and I, we have the vibe. Like we have just like this natural connection that, like, you, you don't get. Like you, it's not one that you can develop, but it's like one that instantly hits. And it's almost like, oh, yo. 
this is like a long brother. I just haven't seen him in a minute. Yeah, 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 yeah. We just, we just like, it's just, it's, it's an energy. Like, you know, I give off this energy, you give off this energy, and it's just like they just match very well type stuff, you know. Um, and uh, yeah, dude, like it's, 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 it's been crazy, man. I've been like, it's like, just as like everybody's like, damn, like this is crazy. I'm just riding the wave, bro. I'm like these opportunities get come upon me, bro. And I'm like, holy crap, you know? So it's just like, but I've always been like in that like mentality where it's just like, all right, cool. Like I knew from like day one coming in this John, like where I was trying to go. And in order to go there, I, I saw the work that I had to put in, you know, and it took a little bit, but like immediately I was just putting in that work. You know what I'm saying? Every time, like I didn't need to fix this. I needed to, you know, up my, my cardio. I needed to up this. Like I did it immediately. You know what I'm saying? Like I was on that tunnel vision hundred percent, bro. So like, that's been the biggest thing. So like every time bigger opportunities come, you know, um, it's just like, I just got to pump it up, you know, even more leading up to it type stuff, you know? Yeah, it's the one thing that, like, I've seen your pictures, like, your before pictures and, like, your pictures now. And you can tell, like, the massive, like, improvement and the dedication that you have to the game, right? And it it's something that, like, you know, and I feel like it's something similar to, like, Damian Priest, right? So Damian Priest, like, obviously, when he got into the game first, like, he wasn't he wasn't the Damian Priest we know now. Like, the WWE yeah. champion. He wasn't that dude. Like, he was a bigger guy. Like, he just really just kind of looked sloppy, right? And that's just trying to put it nicely, you know? Yeah. And then, like he's like yo he, it's just it's, and you're right because it's something with me too like you just it just clicks like you're in the middle of a match and you realize all right i'm not doing this as much i need to do this i'm, I'm gonna do this and then i know i can do that and like you just take care of it you know finding out that you've taken care of all the big things so you can do all the big things that you need to do so you just focus on the little things now and yeah. then you start tuning the things that you need to tune it was something like with me man so i worked uh, i worked at this place called swa down in pennsylvania um and i worked with uh stan styles Right. Oh, yep, yep. And, uh, focus. Yeah. And so he, we were in the match, and the one thing he had told me afterwards, he was like, and he's gonna, he's gonna, you know, he's all shy and stuff. He don't want to talk about it like this. But the one thing he broke down to me, he was like, "Hey, man. So when there's a moment and and the crowd is, is not just trying to figure out how to react to you, like give them something to react to. Like whether you're a face or a heel, like just give them something to react to. That way they know to get behind you and cheer you or boo you." And I was like, "All right, word." So like this last time when I was at SWA, um that was something that happened. Like there was a moment where like I was trying to get the crowd involved into the, into the match. Right. And like, at first they weren't trying to get in. Right. So I, I pick up a dude. Oh, right. Get a pump, crowd pump. They're like, Oh, and I just held the person there until the crowd really started getting into it. And then I slammed a dude and I sat him up and then the crowd was like, Oh, and then they finally started going off. But it right. took like, but it was like one of those things where it's like, all right, I'm gonna keep feeding you guys everything that I want you guys to do. And I'm trying to like, learn to like orchestrate the crowd if that makes sense but it's, yeah, yeah, it's, yeah. it's it was a it's it's a tough skill set to like understand and learn but it was something i was glad that like he pointed out to me so like when you talk about shoring up your games and like fixing cardio and stuff like that like you know we we always constantly have to do that but it was just something it's a, it's a new skill now that i just kind of started figuring out so i'm like all right let me play with this skill a little bit no nah, yeah and like it, it's so it's it, it really is like being in those opportunities right and like first of all being like receptive right because i i've noticed from some of the locker rooms i've been in type stuff like you can try to like you know give someone some you know like advice or critique or you know a suggestion and uh it's just like kind of get the brush shoulders like it kind of comes from the younger guys a lot you know like the guys that are coming up with me right now and um and it's just like it's such a it's such a weird mentality to be in because like i'm always i always tell everybody at next gen like you have to be a sponge right you have to absorb everything and like every you hear the saying all the time in like wrestling like you know it's ice cream or whatever so there's going to be different styles and different ways about going into certain things that are going to be different that this person may like this person may not like you know so it's just like it's 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 like uh, i was i was i was losing my point here i, I lost track but, you know <laughs> but no like uh so there's there's two parts that i can kind of follow up with you right yeah because yeah. it's one thing it's one thing that i do and it's funny so one day one day when i'm in the same locker room i'm gonna show you you're gonna laugh too yeah. but in my bag i legitimately have a sponge 
Like if you had the same sponge for five years, right? Obviously, I've never used it. That's disgusting because I was like, but it's the same sponge that I bought like out of a package and I just threw it in my bag, right? And the reason I have it in there is just as a constant reminder that you know you're here to learn. Like yeah, you're, here okay. to, you're here to do a job, but you're here yeah, to learn. Yeah, yeah. And now, now I kind of now I kind of like remember where I was going, where it was like you understanding that, right? And it clicking there in that match with you and Stan, right? I've had moments like that where like. And early on, like I struggled with the the selling part of like like selling later in the match or selling like stuff that like body parts that were worked or whatever, and it wasn't for the if it wasn't for the Anthony Green match that I had when he came back from like Japan his like first Japan tour a couple of years ago, like that match was like purely structured around him working my my arm, and at that time I was still really struggling with the concept of selling, but after working that match and watching it back and seeing how, you know, he was like emphasizing that stuff to me, like watching it, like it made me kind of understand that and like moving forward. I never, I was always like, it never became an issue again. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah. It is. It's a weird thing about like psychology and like being in the moment. Like there's so much stuff that you have to focus on, like as a worker that you're just kind of like, man, like, all right, so, like, and you understand the stories. Like, people will tell you, too, like, hey, we're going to do this thing and this thing, and then we're going to go that way and this way. And so, sure. like, when you start selling your arm and stuff like that, and then, like, midway through the match, you kind of forget that you're like, oh, oh yeah, that's right, this is, this hurts. And then, like, you're still trying to catch a breath from, like, whatever <laughs> whatever you yeah. just did. And so I'm always, like, I'm always trying to stay conscious of, like, all right, what's affecting? What am I doing? Where am I working? Where's a hard cam? Yeah, can they right. see what I'm doing? Right, it's those things, and it's and like I'm trying to burn it into my memory, second, or into my my body, so it's just second nature. So I don't have to think about like where's hard cam? Oh, it's right here to the left. All right, cool. Like ah, the Peter Griffin thing. Ah, right. So I just want people to know, but it's like sometimes you get into a play like a uh, like I was in a six man scramble match, and I'm like, bro, this is just chaotic. There's no, there's no reason. Like you're gonna try to work some psychology in there, but it is it, it's it's just what it, it is. gets tough it gets tough it the more bodies <laughs> that get in there you know? yeah you're in this uh, giant clusterfuck like you're just trying to figure it out <laughs> no nah, for sure for sure I, I definitely i've definitely been a few of those myself you know? <laughs> yo so tell me about this man i want to ask this question who is Monty aries like like the wrestler or like the person the yes. rapper you know um Mani, that's such a good question, man. I just think like I've never really been ever asked that. I think like I just think Mani's just a dude that like tries to lead by example, you know, that had to learn things the hard way, but you know, took those lessons and not looked at them as losses and just just kept pushing, like you know what I'm saying? That's the kind of guy that just kind of I've been told I, 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 I come across as and I and I try to like, you know, project, you know, like I've always felt like I, uh, you know, wanted to be in a not like leader, but like I've always felt like I was a leader for sure. Like I felt like my one of my biggest purposes in life is to to impact people's lives in a positive way and just some way. But like. I really think that's my purpose where I'm I've, as much as I don't try to say I'm a people person like i think i'm i am a people person you know yeah no i 100 percent hear you because that's exactly like how i feel in life that's probably why we be vibing because it's like um one minute like i think that i'm like and it's been like this i was in the military right and i i, I thought about like serving a bigger purpose right so like I'm in the military i'm doing my thing you know you're obviously people will be like well you were defending freedoms you know for the country and, and this and the other yeah cool that was something i was doing you know but i didn't really at the time like i didn't think about it like that. i just thought about like you know i'm helping people out right we work on the same mission we we have the same goals and then like when I got out, I wanted to find something that kind of gave me like that same sense of purpose, but I really wasn't finding it like anywhere until right. I became a personal trainer. And like, I was like positively like affecting people's lives um, by helping them like get in shape or figure out some new lifting schemes or helping them get to the next level, whether it was like high school or college, you know? So it was, it was one of those things where when I started seeing like the, the changes and stuff like that, I was like, Hey, oh, this is, this is where life is supposed to be. It. Like, that is what you want to do. This is what it, this is what, it, this is what it feels that like. That feeling that you get when like something like good happens out of like you know you trying to just do it out of just like just pureness, not just because you're doing it 
to be good you know like that type of feeling is just like it's kind of indescribable because like it's it just it, it it's like uh what 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 do you what could you say? It's addictive, you know. Yeah. Once you feel that, you're like, oh, that's so awesome, like you know. And then, then you kind of want to just keep it going. And then the whole point is to hopefully like it cause a, uh, I think as people call it a butterfly effect or something like that, where it's now that you did it to that person, that person's gonna remember, you know, and affect them positively. So with that, hopefully, it it inspires them to move it forward to yeah. the next person, and then that just continues, you know. The world's yeah, yeah, yeah. too negative, man. The world's too negative. There's too much negativity happening, bro, where it's just like, why get caught up in it, bro? You know, like, it's just, let's let's try our best to do what we can to try to make it as good as possible while we're on here, man. I mean, it's 100% true. It's like, it's one of the biggest things that, like, I don't think people understand. Because, like, even for me, like, my whole purpose of, like, being a want, want to be, like, and I, I tell people all the time, is want to be like Deadpool in the wrestling world, right? Like, I want to, like, have fun and, like, I want to kick ass, but I also want to have fun doing it. Because I think the, the problem is, is that we get locked into this idea that, like, everything has to be one way, right? Like, if you're a mercenary, like, you're, like, this hardcore, stricken mercenary and this is who you're going to be. Or, you know, if you wanted to kind of be, like, a little, you know, you want to be a comedic cholo, right? You can't, you can't be that person because, like, there's no such thing except for if you watch Next Friday, you see Baby Joker there all the time doing stuff. Like, oh I think, yeah, you know, I think about all these things where it's, like, we have all these different variations. Like, why do we have to be locked in? So, to me, I'm, like, when I'm watching wrestling, like, I look for those characters who are serious but also comedic. Like, look at Shane Helms, right? Like, the Hurricane was, like, yeah. this comedic superhero who kicked ass like i mean he beat the rock you know what i mean like but at the end of the day i just i think that you're right like there just has to be more positivity pump, pumped into this world because we just man we be riding so hard on the negative train lately and i'm like i can't i can't deal with it and and and, and it gets so much light dude you know what i'm saying and like you really can't choose what you want to take in and when that stuff is just constantly pushed and pushed and pushed it's like kind of like impossible to kind of stray away from it you know yeah no, hundred percent, hundred percent. Hey, let me ask though, because I asked this question, or I, I said this right, and I know what it means to me. So I'm just kind of curious to you, right? Being that you are a POC, what is what it? What's your effects, man? How you feel about lifting the bar up on the next level of uh, of, of wrestling? Like you put your inch in on the on this rung that we should have to keep pushing up. Uh, so I'm gonna need you to. To clarify a little bit for me. Okay. Um, repeat that. I'm sorry. No, no, no. It's fine. It's fine. So, yo estoy panameño, right? Estoy latino también, right? Yep, so, yep, I, yep. I ride that. I ride my train. You know what I mean? I'm down for my culture. I'm down for my pride. Down for my culture. I'm down for all that. So, for me, like, I like el trying to elevate the game, right? Yeah. Like, changing what it is, right? And, and put yep. my inch on the, on the, on the wrong. Trying to move that up. Right. You know, I take very much pride. You know, like, it's, it's, it's tattooed. I have it. It's bright. You know what I mean? I let people know. And I'm just curious about you, man. Like when you ride for for your party, man, how you how you feel about putting up the putting your inch in on the on the ladder of raising this bar up? It's 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 more of just like for me, it's just creating a legacy for myself, you know, because I I kind of like come from like a family where like I can't think of anybody that done anything really like amazing in my family. You know what I'm saying? And um, it's it's just about doing that and leaving like a positive message behind in a sense where it's just no matter like as corny as it sounds, right? As corny as it sounds, dude, I, a bro's been through some stuff, but like no matter what the freaking shit that gets thrown at you, dude, like. If you just if you just focus, you know what I'm saying, and you listen, because I like I said, I was stubborn, bro. I was stubborn as a mother effer, bro, when I was young, you know, and like I I just I didn't listen and I chose not to, you know, and I was aware, well aware of it, you know, and um, it was just more of I feel like I have always I've always said that in order for me to help people, right, or if taking advice in general, right, is like. I won't take advice or I won't go to anybody about anything unless they've spoken from experience because they're probably going to tell me something I've done already heard. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So in order for me to be where I wanted to, where I want to be when it comes to like inspiring people and like helping people, I had to experience some stuff, you know what I'm saying? And um, I think like 
with that, it allows me to like kind of come into the business where it's just, I kind of want to, I don't look like the app. Yeah. Like I, I toned down a little bit, but like realistically, bro, there's a hundred guys out here and then the wrestling scene, you look better than me. You know what I'm saying? Physically, you know, like it's just, it's just, I don't look that part. I'm not supposed to be that guy. You know what I'm saying? I'm supposed to be the dude that just, that doesn't make it anywhere, bro. Like I'm not, I'm supposed to be the fuck up, you know? And it's just like, I, I refuse to be that, you know? And I, and I just wanted to, with that, I want to be able to impact the business positively, whether it's changing style, like changing a way that people perceive stuff or changing, you know, a certain style of wrestling or creating my own type of style of stuff that still makes it work and look clean and, and, and focus on the, on the main things, you know, like that's just my, my goal, you know, that's how, how I want to impact stuff, bro. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, no, no, no doubt, man. And it's funny because you mentioned things like, and, and and this is something that I, I learned, too, because, like, I was, like, hard-headed, and I was just, like, I'm going to do things the way that I want to do them, and ain't nobody going to tell me anything different, right? And this was I was, like, going through high school, right? But this one dude said something to me, and I'll never change my – it changed the way I thought about everything, and I tried my best to adapt and change and kind of understand, right? But he said, uh, foolish men learn from themselves while wise men learn from others. And what he meant was – is that when you go through life, right? Your mom tells you don't touch the stove because the stove is hot, right? right. And you're like, nah, I'm not. I'm gonna learn the hard way. And so, what did you do? You went and touched the stove, stove. Yeah. and you found out it was hot. Yeah. And then your mom beats you, right? Because your mom hits you with the belt, you know, or the chancla, right? Whatever it is, right? I said that, bro. That was it. But, but what your baby brother found out was, hey, yo, I'm not touching the stove because of this. And I think that it hit me so hard because I was like, damn, like I never thought about it that way. And I always just thought like, if I learn those lessons, I can teach those lessons to other people. But then I realized it's like, yo, those lessons are already out there. I just have to look at those lessons and be like, oh yeah, don't do that because that's, that's probably not smart. Right. Like, right. Uh, <laughs> so I think about some of those things where like, like even with, with the wrestling culture, right. Cause we, you know, we find, we find this pressure where like, things are getting bigger and better and we want to like go off and do like something massive. We want to hit some big move. And then what happens? We see it go terribly wrong with somebody else. And we're like, yeah, yeah. You know I'm not going to, I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to hit that move. <laughs> not no more, buddy. What's, what's a, what's a move? What was, what's that move for you? Have you, have you experienced that? Oh, you know, what's the, the one thing that freaks me out. Like, even though I know I probably could pull it if I really wanted to, if I had like, if I had to mask the practice on first and I really wanted to pull, I could probably pull it. But uh, shooting star press from the top rope is probably the one that freaks me out the most. Yeah. But I know I can pull it because I've, I do shooting like I do shooting stars into our pool, like at my at my uh, in my uh, residency, like I can do them into the pool. But yeah. just for some reason, standing on the top rope and like think about doing it onto mat, I'm just like, yeah, I just can't do this. <laughs> like I just can't pull this. <laughs> Dude, that's nutty. <laughs> I'm just like nah, I'm great right where I'm at. Like feet planted on the ground, I'm I'm perfect. I'm I'm perfectly happy right here on the mat. <laughs> yeah. yeah. What about you? Uh, so far, I don't. I mean, when I think about it, maybe maybe the vertebra breaker. Mm. That one, I'd be like, I see that, and I'm like, oh no, you know what I'm saying? Because like, <laughs> all it takes is the dude to be a little like too like sweaty. You know, and you just slip a little more, and man, I sit, boy. You That's know, it. yep. Like I feel it's like I have one. no control in my own bump, even if something went off. Like, cause not like I, I feel like I'm really good with my body control. So like, there's been times where people's like, you know, couldn't couldn't lift me up, and I've had to adjust and and just adjust mid like movement, and it literally kind of just like make or break whether or not I got seriously hurt or not. So it's just like. That one, I, I wouldn't feel confident in myself to be able to, like, <laughs> protect myself if things went south. Yeah, I mean, and usually I think, like, you're, like, you're you're high on somebody, too. Like, yeah. And when you're coming down and they're laying around there, you got to, like, hope, like, you're stopping, like, when you're supposed to stop. Because otherwise, yeah. like, Simone, that's it, man. Pop, that's and, it. And then the no. worst part is, like, you don't even see the impact. Like, you're just looking no. up the whole time. <laughs> yeah. 
<laughs> you're just waiting and waiting, and you're just hoping that this mother effort just drops you. Yeah, you know? but you're just like, oh god. And then even at that, like, it's weird because like I, I, I genuinely like if I get caught in a vertebraker, right, and someone asks me, "Yo, can I hit this move on you?" I'm gonna say no because the, not because I'm scared, right? I shouldn't say it like that. I'm scared, right? But what it is is that usually people when they're taking a move like that they're either really comfortable with it or they're gonna be like really skittish and i would find myself in the problem of me just like laughing even as we hit because when i get nervous like i just start laughing uncontrollably like i just just turn to like a pure joker type scenario where i'm just like and i'm talking joaquin phoenix not even like Heath ledger cool like just joaquin yeah. phoenix laughing uncontrollably and uh yeah, I would definitely not want to be able to be a part of that situation where I'm laughing as I'm going down. Like people would be like, something something's wrong with, with Red Dog. Something's definitely <laughs> wrong with him. <laughs> That's hilarious, dude. <laughs> Yo, so actually speaking of bad bumps, let me know what's your worst bump that you've taken? Um Damn. You know, the first thing that comes to mind immediately, so I'm gonna say it. I think so when I was maybe like three months and let me look, maybe my third APW show I worked a um a handicap match with uh Ryan Waters and uh uh his his tag partner I can't remember uh bro's name off top. Um but they were in APW and they worked the match and we had uh set something up where I was gonna uh miss a swanton and I was like yeah man that that'll be nothing you know and I go and I land flat on my back, dude. And immediately, everything went like all the air left my body, bro. He covers me one, two, three. I get up. I still can't breathe. I just get up. I go to the back. I sit down. I let a big one out. And I was like, holy crap, dude. Like, I've taken some shit, dude. And, like, honestly, that was that was the worst bump knowingly I took. <laughs> You know, because I knew I was going to miss that. I would say, like, unknowingly, this one guy went for a suplex. And uh, I, I, I I, was like, nah, I ain't going. I ain't going. And he powered me up and tried to hit the suplex and dropped me right on my head. I mean, mm. yeah, that was probably the worst one because I actually, like, driving home with Kid, I, I think I probably had, like, a minor concussion because, like, I felt, I felt lit and I didn't even do nothing. Like, I was 100% sober. Like, it was crazy. Yeah. You know, I've had I've had both those moments, actually. <laughs> both those moments. Not even, like, so mine wasn't, um, I was actually, I think, a month in. Like, I had been training for a month, month and a half. Yeah. And I wanted to try uh, the, and I told this story on the show, like, a bunch. So these guys were probably like, yeah, we know, Cliff. Uh, you wanted to do a Kira Tozawa's giant senton off the top rope in your first, second month of wrestling in February in the cold. And it was like 30 degrees outside. And I was like, this is a great idea. And uh, as soon as I jumped, not even onto a, 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 a crash pad, it was just oh, straight wow. around. Damn. I hit, and I was like, <gasps> I, I, I feel it in my back right now. Just you explaining. I'm like, Shh. Yeah, I felt it in my lungs. Hell <laughs> like, no, dude. That's crazy. Out. Yeah, so my trainer was like, did we learn something? And I was like, yeah, never do that again. <laughs> yeah, exactly. That's, that's crazy. Yo, and then recently, I actually I did a shotgun drop kick off of uh, off the second rope in a, in a match. And I I don't remember if I connected or if the person pre-bumped. But regardless, my head hit their hip. Like, they oh, bumped wow. and they, they turned sideways somehow. And then my head, like, hit their hip and knocked me out. Like, I was out for, like, I probably, like, a good 10 seconds. By the time that I came to, like, I knew where we were in the match, which was even crazier. Because, like, I heard the crowd clapping. <laughs> so yeah. I, knew, like, I was like, oh, okay, my comeback spot. And I was trying to tell the the person that we were in a triple threat match. And I was trying to tell them, like, yo, I'm kind of loopy. So as I, like, put my hand on their shoulder to tell them, like, yo, something's wrong. They bumped. <laughs> Like a really bad move, and so they're like, "Yo, do something." I was like, "Bro, I'm loopy. I have no idea what's going on, right? I need you to help me." And he was just like, "All right." So like, he coached me to wrestle away, which was like, "Just give me a couple shots, go to pick me up, and I'm gonna throw you in the buckle. Just stay there." I was like, "That's exactly where I'm gonna go." So like, I laid there, but yeah, I drove home and I felt like I had been drinking 
like heavily and i was like and i even jumped on our podcast that sunday so if you guys ever get a chance to like watch it you'll know it's somewhere in the november file uh yeah so i was completely that out of it crazy. yeah so I, I even like i didn't forgot that i had jumped on the podcast and like i had talked to him for a while like i didn't really i got home pulling in the parking lot and i was like all right i'm home things are good like you know i'm gonna go <laughs> but it was crazy dude i was like this is no bueno. <laughs> yeah, dude, like that's that's crazy, dude. Holy fudge. I can only imagine, dude. <laughs> and I was messed up for a couple days too. Like my boss was like, you know, you can't you seem like you're like way too excited, like more overly than what you normally are. And I was like, I feel normal. And they're like, nah, you you're a little different. <laughs> and so I was like, all right, I guess I'm a little different, whatever. <laughs> yeah, I felt like like the next day I, it wasn't too bad. But, like, it was just, like, it, I have never felt that way before. So, I definitely knew it was something. And, um, yeah, that, that that's just, like, it's scary, you know. But it's just, like, how the fuck, how the fuck do you even manage to get through, do all that shit and, like, not even remember it, dude. It's, it's fucking mind-blowing. <laughs> it is weird how, like, the body, like, can respond to situations and, like, yeah. just go through them because like i think about so uh and i don't know if you're a big ufc fan or not but there was this match man with this dude named chris lieben right uh and chris lieben was a bad man dude like a bad bad man from hawaii and like he would get crushed in the face and like we always joked about it we called it like him going into zombie mode because like he get rocked and like he just he's just staring at you like i have no idea what's going on but he knocked out dudes like That's just right completely phased out <laughs> That's crazy, dude. And never know it. And never know it. Like, one time he got he got knocked out on his feet. Uh, his last match, actually, he got knocked out on his feet. But he was fighting back, right, just throwing punches. They're going in and out, pop, 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 boom, boom, pop, pop, boom. Then uh, the bell rings, bing, and Chris Lieben is sitting in the chair, right, for the, I think it's, uh, like, minute and a half, two minutes, right? Yeah. And, and the ref goes, all right, Chris, come in. Let's get, let's get it going. And Chris goes, "Yo, did I? Is the fight over?" And they're like, "No, we're in the second round." He's like, "Nah, I'll call this fight, dude, because I was out." <laughs> He's like, "I had no idea what was happening." <laughs> so he called the fight, and then, uh, yeah, that was, it was that was the last fight, and I was like, "Bro, it was crazy." This man fought for almost three and a half minutes out on his feet, and then sat another two minutes in the chair, thinking. Yeah, the fight's good. We're over. We, we'll be good. And it was like, nah, dude, we got two more rounds ago. He's like, no, we don't. We're out. We're done. That's crazy. That's crazy. I couldn't imagine. I couldn't imagine being able to do that. Mm -mm. That was like second instinct. It's crazy to think about, man. So before we jump into my favorite part of this podcast, I want to ask you this question, man. What is the hardest lesson that you've had to learn being in the business? Um lesson i would think more of a uh i wouldn't i wouldn't consider it maybe a lesson i guess but like when when to do and when not to do mm. that that's that's what i would say you know because there's moments that you know something somebody you know either really upsets you or really, you know, or like, you know, just some type of scenario where it's like you want to act immediately, but like knowing doing that can cause like a a a really bad thing to happen, you know, overall. Like, even though like rest like the wrestling business is small as hell, you know what I'm saying? Like something can happen out here. Something can happen in like Massachusetts, like in, in North Massachusetts, and they'll they'll figure out they'll hear about it, you know, all the way in freaking like Rhode Island, you know, like what the hell? You know, so it's just like the the business has always been that kind of like, you know, from what I've experienced and what you hear, you know, from from all the, the guys, is that it's always been like a very like cutthroat type of thing where it's 
you know, all it is is just one little thing, and that's one person that's plotting on you that whole time just says something to this one promoter or this one person, and it just starts, you know, like word of mouth bull crap. You know, I don't think it's it's as adamant now, sort of say, but it still plays. Like you still see it, and like I think there's been moments where yeah, I've really wanted to act, you know, or I've had or I have acted, and other people perceive me differently because of it and then once i finally get to have that one-on-one with that person they're like oh crap bro like i didn't i thought you was this way because you know i saw that so it was just like learning to just also bite my tongue because not every not everything needs to be spoken you know i'm saying not everything needs to be addressed you know and i was always somebody i was hot-headed you know still somewhat kind of am sometimes so i'm like that's been the biggest thing that i've been like that wrestling has actually helped me with is just like managing learning to hold my tongue, you know, and just like understand that not everything needs attention, you know, not everything needs to get given the light, you know, you just understand that that shit's wrong and you just keep it pushing, you know? Yeah. Um, so that's that. Yeah. If that answers your question, yeah. hundred percent, man. A hundred percent. It's a hundred percent. Like I definitely had those moments where I've legit like just try to walk away from a conversation because I'm like, listen, like I don't want to be, especially if I'm like in a new place and I'm debuting, I'm not trying to cause like, I'm not trying to cause shit. I'm like, yo, just let me, let me roll. Let me just come in. I'm going to be polite. I'm a professional. Say hi to everybody. If we have some kind of beef with something, I'm not going to talk to you about it there. I'm going to wait till like either after the show or maybe a couple days down the road. And then we can discuss it because then it's like off off whatever we were doing right yeah because i feel like there are times where and i've had situations where dudes were telling me like oh no i got time let's go have a conversation i'm like no i don't i want to have the conversation right now we can wait till tomorrow but we ain't having the conversation right now and yeah. Yeah, they right wanted now, to, yeah they wanted to address the situation and i was like all right man we're gonna address the situation but i've already said what i said like now now the ball's in your court and you said this right in front of somebody else so i was like all right cool let's go have this conversation then but yeah, I definitely I've had that uh that problem before. So I can I can relate. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yo, okay. so we're gonna jump into my favorite part of the three count podcast, which is the three count podcast, 10 count questions. And Mr. Aries, this is how it works. I'm gonna fire off 10 questions, that's 10 questions at you rapid fast. And uh whatever your answer is, that's your answer. Okay. <laughs> so I'm gonna put on imaginary timer for added pressure. And in the words of my favorite commentator, Mike Goldberg, here we go. SmackDown or Raw? SmackDown. Favorite movie? Now you see me. I like that. Marvel or DC? Marvel. Favorite TV show? Pretty Little Liars. <laughs> Let's go. Uh, Apple or Android? Apple. Favorite cartoon? Avatar Last Airbender. Let's go. Pancakes or waffles? Waffles. Favorite podcast? The Neighborhood Pod, but the Three Count Pod is a close second. I like it. I like it, though. <laughs> uh, nominate one person that you want to see on this podcast. My dog, Kid V. Let's go. And then last but not least, my favorite question to ask every single person who comes on this podcast. <gasps> favorite curse word? Fuck. <laughs> it's got to be, man. I keep trying to tell people. I'm like, listen, like the, the F word is one of the best of all time like it doesn't it, it, it's bad it's bad you know but it's just like sometimes <laughs> that's all i could just describe whatever freaking happens <laughs> yeah. but well listen man those are all my questions for you so the last thing i need is for you to let our listeners and our viewers know where they can find you man you can find me on the instagram the facey book the ticky talk that's money aries m-a-n-i-a-r-i-e-z baby and on the x slash twitter that's aries underscore money with a s there you go you can also find him on his podcast the neighborhood podcast he just told you that neighborhood pod you can find us on spotify apple uh, I know Google Play's going away, but it's on Google Play and uh, maybe another platform. I don't know. I'm not 100 percent sure, but Spotify is the main one, though, for sure. <laughs> but well, he told you where you can find all this stuff. He told you where you can find him. So what do we got to do? Like every great part of a wrestling match, 
We got to take this home because this is the Three Count Podcast presents Now Entering. And now I'm your host, Clifford Red Dog Miller, the man that leads you up that mountain called wrestling. And like I said, it's never about me. It's about who's entering the ring. So who's entering the ring? You see the man right there, Mani Aries. And you guys know what to do. Tune in to the next episode and be there. Or you're legitimately following us on all of our social media platforms. Just subscribe to our YouTube channel. You're checking us out on Spotify. You're even going to follow us out on Amazon Music and checking us out and leaving those five-star Frog Splash reviews from Apple Podcasts. You're doing that stuff. You're even checking us out on that stupid app with the dumb jingle. You know when it goes iHeartRadio or whatever oh, that is. Oh, shoot, yeah. <laughs> so you're checking us out there. You're going to you're gonna buy our merch on ForYourWear.com or even on ProWrestlingTees.com. You're telling your mom about us. You're telling your dad about us. You're telling your aunties, your uncles about us. You're telling your cousins, your brothers, your sisters, your best friends, and your enemies because we love haters too. Share, like, comment, do all that stuff you guys want to do. And then, you know, you're doing all that or you're really just kind of waiting for this episode to, e- episode to end. You're waiting for that outro. And then you're choosing another episode to listen to. Yes, sir. Kawaii. What's going on? It is Clipper Red Dog. The man that needs you up your nose and call wrestling. And what we need from you guys is just kind of show some support, right? We want you guys to go to our YouTube channel at the Three Count Podcast. Go on to our Twitch channel, Three Count Pod, or even our Facebook page, Three Count Podcast. And just give us a like, follow, subscribe, even give us a comment, right? Do all that cool stuff. Share it with your friends, share it with your family, share it with your enemies, right? Or you can even come talk to us and just chat us up, right? Find us on Twitter at Three Count underscore Pod. Find us on IG and on TikTok at Three Count Pod. Go ahead and leave us those comments. We want to hear from all of you guys. We're going to keep putting on videos and stuff like that. We want to keep making this content better. So we want your guys' support. Also, if you guys want to, go support us at ProWrestlingTees.com forward slash the 3Count Podcast or even find us on ForYourWear.com. Give us the support. Show us your guys' love because we want to give it right back to y'all. So in the meantime, in the meantime, love y'all.